the classics. Debating who is stronger than who, or in this case, which is stronger than which. You've read the title. I'll be mainly focusing on Wolverine's claws and Captain America's shield, but I'll still answer what truly is the strongest metal on Earth. Well, between these two, that is. So let's have a brief rundown on what is made out of what. According to Marvel, Captain America's shield is made out of a Wakandan vibranium alloy, steel, and an unknown third component, while Wolverine's claws are made out of the popular adamantium. But what most people don't know is that there are multiple types of adamantium. There's proto-adamantium, true adamantium, secondary adamantium, and adamantium beta. There are more, but there is too much to list and too little of relevance. The one that is present within Wolverine was true adamantium, but the metal experienced some molecular changes due to Logan's healing factor interacting with it. The resulting metal was named adamantium beta. Anyways, this adamantium was originally created with the intention to replicate the metal that made up Captain America's shield. The shield's metal, which was composed of three key components, was then named proto-adamantium. Yep, the first one on the list I said earlier. So to recap, the Wakandan Vibranium, Steel, and Mysterious Third Element make up Proto-Adamantium. This is probably confusing, so let's just refer to the films just real quick as it is much more simpler and easy to follow. Due to the rights issues with Fox owning the X-Men and Marvel, well, owning Marvel, Cap's shield is just made entirely out of Vibranium. So basically, Wolverine equals Adamantium and Captain America equals Vibranium. Adamantium Beta, as shown on screen, is so durable that it was able to withstand the power of the nuclear bomb that was set off in Nagasaki. It is an iron-based alloy that is very very dense and is said to be virtually indestructible in its own universe. With razor sharp ends, Wolverine is literally given the edge in almost every battle he has been in. It is known to cut through anything except for adamantium itself. On the other side of the ring, Wakandan Vibranium, or just Vibranium in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is stronger than steel but only a third of its weight. Its distinct key feature that differentiates itself from adamantium is that it is vibration absorbent. It has taken heavy hits from Thor's hammer several times with most being team up maneuvers. And for some reason, it has the magical ability to somehow always wind up back in the captain's arms. No matter which angle it is thrown from or which direction it goes. It's not really magic, it's more like a science fiction kind of thing. Regardless of each metal's special and destructible features, they both have their own limits. Though it was stated earlier that adamantium can't cut itself, with a high enough temperature and force, it can. In the 2013 film The Wolverine, the Silver Samurai suit had a sword made out of adamantium with a special ability to heat up to 3000 degrees. I'm assuming that's Fahrenheit, because that's closer to the comic book counterpart, but let's be generous and go with 3000 degrees Celsius. Oh, again with the assumptions. You know what they say, if it's not a fact, then it's not exact. Am I right? <laughs> well, jeez, man, you caught me. What, do you want a cookie? Its opponent, Vibranium, is able to take much more heat. In Age of Ultron, Ultron built a new body out of Vibranium. It took not just Vision's Mind Stone, but Iron Man's Repulsor Blast and Thor's Lightning to slowly start melting the Vibranium away. We don't really know the limits of the Mind Stone, and trying to find out Iron Man's Repulsor Blast temperature would seem like a lot of hassle. Instead, all all we need to know is what Thor is shooting out. That's what she said. Typical lightning bolts heat up to around 60,000 degrees. Again, not very specific on which measurement they're referring to, but on another website it is stated that lightning bolts can actually reach up to 53,540 degrees Fahrenheit. That's more than five times hotter than the surface of the sun. Keep in mind, the surface is probably the coolest temperature on the sun. Its core is like a ridiculous 27 million degrees Fahrenheit sauna. But we saw Wolverine stand up against a nuke which is said to be tens of millions of degrees. That is true, but hold on a sec. He wasn't the only one in that hole who made it out alive. In fact, the other person in there wasn't a mutant, he was a human. In a process called alkaline hydrolysis, it's like cremation but healthier for the environment for some reason, a human body takes about 3 hours at a temperature of 320 degrees Fahrenheit to be completely turned into liquid, except the bones. Bones are pretty strong. So what am I trying to say exactly? Well if it were in the tens of millions as stated earlier, then wouldn't this guy be liquid right now? The answer is yes. But since he didn't, that means only one thing. This guy and Wolverine didn't experience that much temperature. The people that probably did were those who lived around the neighborhood of the origin of the blast. Notice how far away the bomb originally landed. So we can't really say that that explosion from that far away of a distance was millions of degrees hot. We can still get an estimate though by hypothesizing what Wolverine held to shield Mr. Yoshida. We aren't really given a good look at it, but listen to the sound it makes when it hits the floor. It made a sort of clink kind of sound, something a metal would make. Metals have different melting points from one another, but all seem to range in the few thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. This is excluding adamantium and vibranium, since they are both fictional. Considering this, then that would mean Logan and Yoshida briefly experienced temperatures that could have ranged between 320 degrees Fahrenheit to a few thousand. And we also have to consider how heat works. Doing what Wolverine did, or basically this, wouldn't do much as the heat is in the air. It would just travel around an object. Here, you can clearly see that Yoshida isn't very protected at all. 
all. I mean, look, there's a significantly sized hole for the heat to get in, and a big gap which is not sealed up whatsoever. And though temperatures reaching a few thousand sounds hot, it is still nowhere near to that of Vibranium's melting point. Remember, Ultron's body was melted by the lightning bolt, somewhere around 60,000 degrees plus Iron Man's repulsor blast and Vision's Infinity Stone. And referring to the footage again, it looked like he was melting away pretty darn slowly. We didn't necessarily see the melting point of adamantium, we just saw a super burnt Logan with maybe some skeleton popping out? It could be just burn marks. But since it only took 3000 degrees to help the Silver Samurai cut Wolverine's claws off, then multiplying that by 10 would most likely do some serious damage without even needing the adamantium sword this time. I mean look, 3000 degrees makes it sizzling hot. How much more can it really take? Adding something like 40,000 degrees would probably warp the metal a lot and that temperature would still not reach that of vibraniums. So since vibranium can take more heat than adamantium, does this mean that Captain America's shield is stronger than Wolverine's claws? To answer the first part of the question, the two metals' durability against heat has nothing to do with them standing up against one another. Vibranium can take more heat because the metal specializes in things with kinetic energy. And this is more because of the metal's special property, not a result of its strength. The lightning is hot because of the motion of particles and atoms within. They are bouncing around really really fast. And well, it absorbs this kinetic energy. And to answer if Captain America's shield is stronger than Wolverine's claws? Well, yes and no. Here, let me explain. Remember when I said that in the comics, Captain Shield is made out of proto-adamantium? And that the true adamantium inside Wolverine was an attempt to recreate proto-adamantium? Well, it just so happens that true adamantium, or I guess, adamantium beta now, is only nearly as strong as proto-adamantium, meaning it's not as strong. Thus, in the comics, Wolverine's claws would not be able to cut through Captain America's shield. But that's only in the comics. In the movies, well, the answer is completely different. Since Marvel, or Disney, does not own the film rights to the X-Men, they aren't allowed to say that Cap's shield is adamantium like it actually is in its original source material. So that's why it's purely just vibranium now. The reason why Wolverine's claws are superior to Cap's shield here is because of its density. Density is the degree of compactness of a substance. Think about it like this. Take a ton of feathers and a ton of cinder blocks. They will weigh the same, but it will take more feathers to even things out. Probably a lot more. That's because a cinder block is more dense than a feather. The same can be said here. It would take more vibranium to weigh as much as the adamantium as it's less dense. If you were given the same volume of adamantium and vibranium, there'd be more mass present in the adamantium. So the real winner is what matters more. Ha! Huh, get it? More mass means more matter? You should stop posting videos, you're not funny. Okay. Though we aren't given exact numbers, the density of adamantium is used to explain why the metal is able to drill things with greater effectiveness than vibranium. And remember, we're talking about a metal that can't even cut itself. Sure, it did in the Wolverine, but that was because of the 3000 degree heat gave a helping hand. This differs from vibranium as shown in Captain America Civil War when Black Panther's vibranium claws leaves scuff marks on Steve's shield. In the end, I wouldn't necessarily say adamantium is stronger than vibranium, since they both have their own advantages over one another, and the word strong has multiple meanings. But if you were to have someone wield an adamantium sword and another wield a vibranium sword, both of which are the same size, swing at each other, the one with the adamantium sword would be the winner. Plus, it's said on the Marvel Wiki that vibranium is not as hard as adamantium. I could have started off by pointing that out, but if I did, this wouldn't be much of a video now, would it? So theoretically, in the movies, Wolverine could scratch and leave dents on Captain America's shield without too much difficulty. But cutting through the shield would need a lot more force. I mean, due to size differences between the claws and shield, it's possible, but Logan would need a running start or something to give out more force. But we may never see that, as the two universes are slated to be separate, probably for a long time. One thing I'd like to add before I sign off here, I will be making a Q&A very soon. So post questions down below and ask me whatever's on your mind. I'll try to answer as many as I can, unless I get like a total of three questions, then hey, I get to answer all of them. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, this research took a lot out of me. If you like this video, then please hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. Also, click right here to see last week's video, and if you really enjoyed this video, video then be sure to check out my other content ranging from a versus series to trailer analyses to movie reviews. 